What he writes is prophecy, and what he presents to you is the most coherent parts of it. Between prophetic fits, he is a recovering sugar addict, punisher of international creatives, and an office administrator. Please welcome Ezreal Johnson. Technical difficulties, sorry. Did I really put Punisher on there? Because you said Punisher. Publisher. Oh, okay. Publisher, really? I do not. <laughs> All right. This is what I love about being live. Publisher of International Creatives. Punisher of regressive thinking. There we go. And he's a fancy dresser, too. Maybe that'll be the next uh, intro that Brandon Hanks does. <clears throat> this is for Kirsten Landau. She was uh, murdered by her neo Nazi boyfriend. This music is driving me insane because you are not here to hear it. I remember all of the tear-drenched, it-will-be-all-right shoulders and insomniac nights spent together staring at the stars. You once told me, friends enter and leave our lives, but the impressions they make on our hearts stay with us forever. But you were only partially right. You have made an impression on my heart. You have transformed me, but you would never leave my life, not really. I will see you in every photograph you can no longer be in. I will see you in every flash of lightning and every shooting star. It is your face I will see in the moon from now on. And the next UFO I see will no doubt be under your command. It will be your hand helping me guide my daughter. I will feel you standing beside me on my wedding day. We are two parts of the hook and horns and I will headbang hard enough for the both of us for the rest of my life. This music is driving me insane, but I was already a little crazy to begin with, and you loved me anyway. I'm Asriel Johnson. Um, if you like any of the things I say tonight, I have books that you can get for me for money. Kiss money. And poetry. And poetry and funding, writing, and all that. One more hour to go insane. Knees hurt so much, too much standing in pain. Want to give this up. Berated by ex-girlfriends or irate customers. Stuck in this 9 to 5 situation at 7 p.m. I feel the walls of reality de degenerate at the speed of the sound of a light. Just give up and collapse. Let the darkness overtake. What is this strange sensation? The sensation of dilapidation. One more hour to go insane. I think I might make it. <laughs> Poetry, passion, purloined like purses, stolen, snatched, ensnared from me. Words wrangled, wrapped, and weeded till only toothless tragedies remain. Fragmented facades of fantasy's folly, struggling through my sieve of a mind, taken and twisted until untouchable, tangled, and spit like saliva on these lines. A cage of carelessness coerced this course, no fault or flagrant foul performed by others ostracizing or over-criticizing. My deeds were done by only one. My misery, my own misfortune, my own mistakes, misnomers, misanthropy, my own problem. A search for substantial sustenance, intimate, intellectual intercourse, and restoring, reanimating the shriveled shell of self I used to be, regaining me. So I'm, are any of you familiar with the, uh, the poetic form Cento, where basically you take lines from other pieces and you put them into poems? Um, I am doing a similar thing with uh, spam emails. So like all the uh, funny things in those spam emails, I'm putting them into 
poems. It's kind of it's kind of like carving in a way, because I'm I'm not taking the whole email. I'm just like chopping out the, the good bits. Um, this is an example that I published with uh, with the uh, Crisis Chronicles Press. You'll see Mr. John Burroughs later tonight. Um, this is the least dirty of the five that I put in the book. Oh, it, uh, never mind. Never mind. I was going to give an example, but no, I'm not going to. Uh, the title is "Re Fifteen Hundred Dollar Deposit in Your Account Today." Hello, a secret admirer sent you a message. Someone may have run a background check on you. View results. Someone thinks you're special and has just sent you an e-card. You've got three chances to win $1,000 worth of tickets. Now is the time to apply for a refinance. Join me on See My Profits in 70 Days, Stifor Total Success. See what's on sale, 11, 6, 10, 10, 21, 11. Get your home ready for holidays with 20 cent fuel perks. A major milestone. Involver reaches half a million customers. New Xbox, Wii, and PS3s all over 90%. Consignment. Business offer. Write that book workshop. Rewarding resumes. Mystery. Secret shopper is available now. EMU jobs now available on Twitter. Secret shopper are job available. This is not a myth. Please, my dearest, help me. Your sim misses you. So I have some announcements while I've got your ears. Um, so I run Writing Nights Press along with Skylar, who you'll see next after me. Um, we do two shows a month uh, on the second Fridays in downtown Canton at Makeshift Makerspace and on fourth Wednesdays at the Outpost in Kent. Um, I have more announcements. I'll just keep going through as I go through the uh, these next four are unrelated pieces written one after another. One, I step over ladders to unbad my luck. I catch black cats before they cross my path and cuddle them to a new home. I plant clovers to increase the likelihood of four leaves. Two, words are magic. You can turn back time with a sentence and reality can change. You can unthink your thoughts. You can refold events unfolded. You can Fantasia paint a dreamscape with buckets and mops. Three, I would surround myself in words, wrap my skin in sentences, quotes, phrases, and anecdotes. I would scrawl subject verb agreement and disagreement on the walls, searching for the key to Tao. Painters exploring walls with their brushes are called muralists. Writers who cover their walls are called insane. Four. My jagged, cracked fingernail resembles ice frozen over a puddle being soaked into the ground. My fingernail's freezing point was a heavy door plus jam. The puddle of blood soaked into a hungry paper napkin as I squeezed the blister. I wonder how long I'll have to stop chipping away at the nail for it to grow back out and reattach to my finger. I wonder what it would feel like to have no nail of which to speak. To competition writing, uh, Ready Nights does uh, our own little uh, form of competition. We call them sword fights. Uh, for the uninitiated, picture a poetry slam mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Next one. It's called Sentinels. The guard shack is a poultry bird, wings wide, air moving through, we do not fly. We are the sentinels of the nightly, daily, week-long, repetitious, foul holocaust. My only consolation is not observing the mechanical destruction of genetically manipulated food. 
Their only consolation is their ignorance of what the outside world could hold. The occasional escapee experiences tiny freedom before being captured by the ones just doing their job. My reverence is my apology. Thank you for your sacrifices. Their comfort is someone paying an attention which doesn't lead to decapitation. I whistle to them and they chirrup to me. We all miss the message. I don't speak chicken and they don't speak hypocrite. <laughs> this one I wrote for Skylar. Ooh, love and <laughs> It's called Solemn Libation. We are two parts of a spondee. We have been this way since day one, sharing times of our own heartbreak to avoid a crappy love song. We have been a careful breakdown, and our love has been a black hole drawing all the light from outer space, and we're a supernova exploding like bombs on D-Day. This is independence. You're drop-dead gorgeous. I've been called a dead man. We've been meant to be since childhood, since I played house with that Sarah, before you became Miss Skylark. There was Andy Andy Andrew before I adopted this name. Call them placeholders, our matrix facsimiles until our real selves came together, intertwined. I dreamt of you before kismet. I didn't know who you could be to me. I just saw a cute girl who loved me no matter what. But dream girls you have so far surpassed because you are filled with heartbeats and breathing with soft hair, skin, touch, taste, smell, sight, and these are for me, just like I give all mine to you. So in light of recent events, I thought I would throw this one into the uh, set. It's called Save It. Hey guys, I know how you feel. When I see a gorgeous woman strutting, sashaying, bouncing, walking down the street, through the market, anywhere, all of my instincts jump to my god, she's fine. Thank you, Aphrodite, for bestowing your beauty on this creature before me. Oh, I want to say, save it. Because while you may want to pay this gorgeous creature a compliment straight from the bottom of your heart, you never know, know how she might be feeling. You don't know if her smile is at you, is her general disposition, or a smile from the depths of depression, or just an appeasement to avoid another attack. Save it. It doesn't matter how amazing she looks or how up you are feeling. It is your job as a man to make sure she walks this world unharmed. And yes, your cat calls and wolf whistles can be the trigger for her PTSD. Save it. There is certainly no fault in admiring a beautiful woman walking by, but as you are taking in her visual delights, remember she is a person too. She has a brain behind that smile, a heart between those breasts, and the bridge to do life between her legs if she chooses. She is not an object or a broodmare for the state, a prize you can win or a conquest for your crew of little seamen to plant their flags. Save it. Because she is a person, plain and simple. She doesn't have energy to spare to shield herself from your veiled misogyny, masquerading as appreciation for beauty. Save it and save her from the similar threats of your cat-calling brethren when they've forgotten how to respect women. It's time to hold one another accountable for disrespectful actions. No one is asking for a holy war, just a word to cool the smoldering embers of ingrained rape culture. Every man is a threat, and the only way that can change is if we change it. Save it. Because one day you'll meet a woman you'll love more than air, a woman whose beauty the word beauty cannot compare, a woman who will drive you to distraction only to lead you to focus, and all those compliments you saved will choke their way from your throats, they'll shower your lover, eroding those years of pain from unwanted advances from less than slightened men. The liquid silk of her body will not be your possession, but each touch of her lips will ignite new passion, and each beautiful woman you see will charge a new battery. But you are the toy, and when her favorable eye bathes you with play, you will be glad for every time you save it.
So anyone interesting in anyone interested in publishing, Writer Nights also accepts work from people. Uh, currently, we are accepting poems for little Halloween cards for trick or treat. Um, they were going to pass them out on the 27th at downtown Canton. Uh, we're having a food drive on November 9th, and we're collecting poems for a small collection that people get when they bring in cans of food. Uh, we're collecting, we're trying to collect a thousand haiku. We're going to release that for Christmas. And then we're also having a clothing drive for Decem uh, December 14th. So weather appropriate clothing and all that. I am not an ally. Don't get me wrong. I don't hate you. I don't even know you and I already like you. Your happiness is a concern of mine. I don't mind talking a little crap now and then, throwing a few off-color jokes because F political correctness, but I won't use disparaging words against LGBT or POC or women, but I'm not an ally. I will rage against machines churning our kids from playground to jail yard, from classroom to dead slavery. Our education is closer to mental domination, filling the heads of elementary, middle school, high school, college students with the imaginary dream that they'll be able to use their degrees in the professional life. It's crap, I'm with you, but I'm not an ally. I'll defend you. If some bigot tries to fight you for being you, I got you. I'm not a giant, but I'll bite a throat out if I need to. I don't care if it's a cop or a drunk fool harassing kids on the corner. I'll put myself between you and trouble, or I'll watch from afar to let you handle your business, whatever you need but I'm not an ally. You can't call yourself an ally. Even if you are committed to a cause that isn't your own and willing to put yourself on the line, the people who cause you, whose cause you are supporting are responsible for the designation of ally. It's like punk. Once you've called yourself punk, you aren't. It's up to others to say whether you are punk, which is counterintuitive, I know. Who cares what others think about you? Hold that thought. It's like Zen, when you reach enlightenment, you just know. The Tao is nameless, formless. Once you've declared you've experienced the Tao, you've lost it. Hold that thought. Being an ally is like that. Act as if you don't give a crap what other people think. Ingrain in yourself the idea of being kind to people who treat their surroundings with respect. Empathy with the struggle of other people are going through, even if you can't possibly experience it. Defending to the death the lives of those you love. When you act in balance without thinking, you have reached the Tao, but you don't care anymore. And that is punk. And that is an ally. We got two more. So, what do you all think about diabetes? It's sweet. <laughs> the anticipation consumes me before sugar ever hits my lips. I know well the smell of baked goods, the lashing of my tongue by granulated goodness, the pure caning of my taste buds by the oncoming sweetness. All my life I've known when something was going to be too sweet, but like a slave I was chained to its consumption. No, not a slave. I had a choice. I made the choice. I took in every bite with relish or ketchup in disgust, but I ate it all. I ate too much all the time. I made the choice. As a child, maybe I didn't know any better. My brother gorged himself, so I thought I could too, and I did. I fell asleep after big meals like the men in my family. I thought that was normal. There wasn't much less information back then to begin with, and as a child I had the least of it, and as a child I had the most trust for people who didn't know what was best for me, but tried, at least in some cases. I'd been getting high on fructose for as long as I could remember, and my dealers were, were my family. It's true, you shouldn't get high on your own supply. The sugar crosses my lips, tongues down my throat, hits my stomach, I've always had a stomach that can stand anything. Hot food, mass amounts, give me anything, except lima beans, weirdly enough. 
No discomfort, no vomiting. Combine a cast iron stomach with a revulsion towards wasting food, and I've got a recipe for a fat aster. I've always been fat, other than a few extra layers and twice the density. I look like I did when I wrestled 112 pounds in high school. I've had a dad bod since before the term was in vogue, long before I was old enough to be a dad. The sugar collects on my body. My pancreas fights for its life inside me, producing or possibly, probably overburdening itself. A sponge squeezed and re-squeezed until there is no liquid left, and then squeezed again until it is a dry husk of an organ. At least that's the progression. My kidneys don't know how to process the urea and have become damaged, spewing protein like an oil pipeline spill. My body is a disaster area, a terrorist aftermath, and my life is the resistance to it. One more announcement. Um, so, Ready Nights also publishes books. Uh, November and December, we accept chapbook, full length, and mixed media collections. So, if you're interested in publishing, I've got cards and also books. You know, you want to buy books from me. This last one is adorable. I figured I'd end on a light note. I watched a little girl stand against the wall. She looked down at the ground with her foot on the wall, jumping forward to the wall in front of her. I watched her small sprints from wall to wall, trying to figure out what she was doing. She wasn't smiling. She was concentrating. I followed her eyes to the floor. Are you trying to outrun your shadow? Mm-hmm. Have you done it yet? Mm -mm. Maybe you should try, try distracting it. There are actually two. She pointed to the shadow to her left. Which do you think is faster? The one over here. I met thousands of people every first Friday. We do this thing at our poetry space, our gallery space, add a line of poetry. We set a theme for the month and ask people who pass would you like to add a line to our group poem about insert theme here? We get our lines filled generally, but most people give us a look akin to deer in headlights. They stutter and say, I'm okay, or I'm good, or I'm not witty, or I'm not any good with words, or I won't be good, or I'm not a poet. Who told these people they aren't poets? Who told them they can't create? Who told them to stop trying to outrun their shadow? This isn't good. We are all artists as children until someone tells us we are not. We are balls of energy, small sprints, bouncing between walls. At the end of the night, I asked the little girl, did you outrun your shadow? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Did I even All right. Excellent. If we 